ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Priscilla Black. <laughs> this is the problem, I'm sorry. It was me wire hanging out. Sorry about that, but that was great. Just pretend I never did it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date's Greatest Hits, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Priscilla Black! <laughs> this is the problem, I'm sorry. It was me wire hanging out. Sorry about that, but that was great. Just pretend I never did it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date's Greatest Hits, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black! Welcome to Blind Date's Greatest Hits, the greatest moments and most memorable characters from 13th series of Blind Date. Over the next hour or so, we'll be reliving some fantastic highlights from Blind Date history and also giving you the chance to see things that no one has seen before. <laughs> yes, indeed. Like, like the original, never transmitted, first ever Blind Date. And also some of those classic bloopers when things didn't go exactly to plan. But let's start off with a look at some of the faces you've known and loved over the years. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Hayden, and I come from Cleveland. <laughs> Question. I was going to take a degree in advanced cognitive cybernetics. <laughs> but I decided it wasn't sufficiently intellectually challenging for me. Can you say that again, please? Sometimes I'd have to dub down some rather raunchy noises. Oh, did you? Oh, oh, you did all them, did you? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, right there, yes, yes, there, 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 yes, yes, there, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I have 
to say, Maggie, that's me just taking my shoes off when my feet are killed. <laughs> <laughs> and what is our brain doing nothing? I work for a large supermarket chain and I'm a butcher. Well, if you could sell a pound of, so a pound of sausages to any lady, who oh, would you sell them to? Kelly McGillis. Well, that's impressed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she'd like a touch of jazz and a touch of the Aramis as well? And a touch of my sausage. <laughs> here this evening I'd like to be at home with a giant bar of chocolate where would you rather be tonight if you weren't here I'm a bit of a traveler so I reckon uh, really I want to travel in space and <laughs> what I would really like is if you and I could travel together on a five-year mission to new frontiers and hopefully I'd be going where no man has gone <laughs> Tell me frankly, what you think a date would be like with number two? I wouldn't recommend a night out with any of them, I think. <laughs> number three looks like he has to be in by ten o'clock. <laughs> number two looks as though he doesn't have to be in at all. better off with me. Hey. Hey. You and me, we make a whoopee. We make a whoopee. <laughs> Dancing to me, it, it makes me feel really good because I can really flow. Once I get moving, something just clicks like that. I can't stop myself, it just, I just flow. <laughs> that little interview you oh, said yes. that you went to a palmist yeah. and she said you were going to meet your future husband through television I want my seven pound back it looks like you got it back <laughs> Studio One at LWT, where every single blind date has been made. Mind you, the very first time we did the show, you never saw it. In 1985, when I presented the pilot edition of Blind Date, it was never intended to be seen by the viewers at home. At least, not until now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date, the programme where boy meets girl and girl meets boy with the watchful twinkling eye of Miss Scylla Black. This show is all about making dates. You're going to see a lovely lady who's going to choose one of three fellas. And I'd like to ask them if they'd be prepared to fight to defend me. <laughs> Importantly, would they be any good at it? Well, actually, I'd have to defend you to my last gasp, which would probably be very shortly after my first one. <laughs> you chose number three, my favourite, and yours, Tony Daniel from Surrey. Come in. <laughs> those days, the contestants were told to shake hands when the screen went back, <laughs> so it's not to shock the viewer. How things have changed. Mind you, if you thought that was a bit different, have a look at the film of the date. He's late. Well, what's he come as? I say hello. The old boss is over here. <laughs> Large puddle ahead. <laughs> you 
silly, stupid bird brain. <laughs> well, we've come a long way since then. Mind you, the whole point of a pilot edition is to give us the chance to make mistakes and then put them right. And you never get to see them. Now, sitting on one of these stools must be one of the most nerve-wracking experiences. And we get plenty of mistakes here, too, including more than a few from someone not a million miles from me now. Mm. <laughs> well, hello and welcome back. Let's go meet our three lads, Paul, Nick and Jet. There they are. Tell oh, everybody oh. what you do. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Come in, Sally. <laughs> I knew I'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please. It's your own bloody fault. Look at the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Up until now, what has always come first in your life? I'm a career person too, and I pride myself on my selling skills. If you pick me tonight, I can guarantee... I don't know what I can guarantee. <laughs> Jason, it's making mind up time now. Mm -hmm. okay. And I say this every, every week. Don't make your mind up until you've heard it. Heard it. <laughs> heard it. Question one. My idea of a romantic evening is a night in with a video and a takeaway. If you were to choose both of them, what would you pick and why? I think I'd pick for us dancers with wolves. <laughs> Um, because what I'd say, I'm buggering up here, excuse me. <laughs> Which one are you going to choose? No, 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 not all. <laughs> and only one. And don't tell us that one just yet, because there's our Graham with that quick reminder. Well, Nana, will you be help? No, he won't. I'm just carried away with it all. <laughs> As an auctioneer, I um, have a few problems and... <laughs> I'm it up again. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Scylla, I am so sorry. I've it up again. I'm really sorry. I'm really... <laughs> I thought television were for me, but I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nico, they're all dying to know now. Did you ever get it right, Chuck? Eventually, Silla. You did. Do you know, I wouldn't have recognised you, love. I mean, you've changed everything, haven't you? What happened to your hurt? <laughs> it looks lovely. You look gorgeous, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But more importantly, I don't care what happened to your hurt. What happened to those... What happened to those chicken bones? <laughs> My mum nicked them for soup. <laughs> Mind you, not that Nico was the only fashion victim we had on the show. <laughs> now, what does it say? A date as a supermodel. <laughs> work when you turn up like that. Wow! <laughs> Could you describe your outfit you're wearing tonight? Well, a Norfolk suit plus tools with a double gusset. Uh, <laughs> it does come in handy at times. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> the clothes I wear often get me noticed. <laughs> what gets you noticed? Now, in the 1930s, yeah. I got the gold medal in the city in Gills for clothing designing. Oh, and I must say that that outfit of yours is a bloody smash. It's marvellous. Oh, thanks a lot. It's a great smart. Oh, thank However, you very much. Whoever's designed and made that, it deserves the highest uh, uh, worthy. Uh, well, yes. What's the yes. word? Yes. I can't. <laughs> yes. Anyway, ask me about what I do I at night. <laughs> those shoes love I got them in Newcastle and I know but you know at a joke shop as Oscar Wilde said if I seem a little overdressed it's because I'm immensely overeducated <laughs> yeah, if, I, if I could understand you Jason I'd comment on that <laughs> <laughs> You've got some front wearing that front, that's good. Wow! <laughs> Do you know, after all these years, this is the first time I've ever sat on one of these stools? And very comfy they are, too. And during that time, we've had some really memorable characters sitting on these famous stools. And here's just a few of my favourites. Matthew, well, Hiya. Matthew, what do you do up there in Cheshire? Oh, well, I'm a needle valves gas test engineer. <laughs> I'm looking at you and I'm, I can see, I can see you're the image, a spitting image of a pop singer. Yeah. I'm I mean, who you think you're the spitting image on? Well, I'm a, I'm a spitting image of... Uh, hang on, can I start that what? again? You've got to get hang up on. to do yeah, it. Yeah, because what I've got to do. <laughs> right, hang on. Who do you think you well, look like? Basically, I get up every morning, look into the mirror, and I think, oof, what a sexy young man. <laughs> and I think, I think, oh, you just look like, uh... <laughs> right, you just... I know you, and uh, I know uh, yeah. who you look like. I've, have you remembered who yeah. you look like? Tony Hadley from yes. Spandau Ballet. Yes. <laughs> I've been mistaken for Yasmin Lebon on several occasions and even signed autographs as her. What famous person could you be mistaken for? <laughs> it's number three. I am Tony Hadley from Standard. <laughs> I don't know what you are, James. What's that? Well, you are, apart from being a market trader, you are a market trader, aren't you? Certainly am. Oh, Funnily enough, enough, what I what? did for you, I actually bought some towels down here oh, this yeah. evening. <laughs> Well, please don't worry about the colours, cos they all wash white. Is right. this what you sell, this kind of <laughs> merchandise you it sell off is. the back of your lorry? Well, funnily enough... It hasn't dropped off the back of a lorry, has it? <laughs> Something like that. These are what you call summer goods, actually. Oh, they are? Some okay. of these are stolen and some of them aren't, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all I'll say to you, though, you might be interested in, they're 100% cotton, they're two-fold jacquard woven, and they are hemmed and bound all the way round. So I'll tell you what, forget about a five or a four pounds, three pound or two, 175 or 150 and forget even 125 or a pound i'm not joking in fact 90p 80p nowhere near 70. one second i'll tell you when to pay how to pay who to pay but forget even 60p and on this occasion as it's a one-off i'm going to do a special bit of spot of advertising yeah. as soon as i'm on the tv I was on the TV last week, I was interference, but never mind. But forget even 50p, or for some of you that might be 10 bob. 9 bob or 8 bob, 7 bob or 6 bob, 5 bob or 4 bob, my bob or your bob, is bob or her bob, 2 bob or new bob. Cos watch, go on, I'll take 5 pence. <laughs> on our date, I shall want to kiss you. Ooh. <laughs> I haven't started yet. <laughs> Kiss 
you, hug you and squeeze you. <laughs> but most of all, I want to hold your hand. <laughs> what sort of things will you want to do to me? Well, I'm a bit of a romantic myself, actually. But I've always quite fancied mud wrestling. <laughs> so, if we went on a date... One thing I haven't told you yet. <laughs> it's my birthday today. <laughs> I really don't like to beat around the bush with this namby pamby chit chat. Right. I like children. Are you gonna have mine or what, number two? <laughs> Your children? Well, we, you know, yeah, go on, yeah, carry on. Now. Well, what day? <laughs> what I actually meant was that, see, I didn't get any romantic feedback off Shell you here. Didn't give me any. I did. I was playing cool. <laughs> I nice kid. And I, I paid, I paid compliments. Compliments, yeah, but just because oh. you say I look nice doesn't mean to say, you know, go off and see you, does it? <laughs> Is that well, what you said at the beginning of the film, though, Sherry, that he didn't have the four factor. No, no, but he did at the same time, he didn't give me any sort of signals that he, he wanted any romance. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What kind of signal is she after? <laughs> Well, this is the studio control room, the nerve center of Blind Date, where our director puts the show together. We thought you'd like a look behind the scenes, so a couple of weeks ago, we got one of our ex-Blind Daters, Otis from Surrey, to give us a contestant's guide to being on Blind Date. So roll BT. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the very bowels of the London television studios. We're in the dressing room area, and this is where the blind date day begins. Right here. It's, a, it's a dressing room. Contestants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone, please, let me help you. <laughs> this way, everybody sit down, make yourselves comfortable, a couple biscuits, some tea, and what have you. <laughs> it's important that the pickies and the pickers never bump into each other before they actually go on. So, the pickers are brought in through a special entrance. We come through here, round the corner and up these stairs, <laughs> down these stairs, and you end up here on the upstairs with our pickers, Duncan and Joanne. How are you feeling? You all right? Fine, thank you. Any nerves? Yeah. Few. Nerves? <laughs> Let me put you straight. There's no need to feel nervous. I'm an old boy. Done it before. All you have to remember is to come out, wave, walk, slowly in control, down the stairs, hop in the seat, say hello to Scylla, and remember, you have three questions, and there are three contestants. Now, right, question number two. I think we'll start the other way around now. We'll go to number three, then. <laughs> right. Question number two to number three this time. Number two, you'll get the next one first as well. See? It's easy. And remember, nerves, throw them out the window because Scylla is there with you all the time. She's your friend. She'll take care of you. <laughs> right. Supposed to touch the star. <laughs> the right. star can touch you. <laughs> Back with the pickies now. They've been given the questions, and this is the most important part of their day. They've got about an hour to formulate their answers. The aim of these answers, to woo. To woo. <laughs> Hello again, Jason. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, honey, if I was in your farmyard, I'd have to be a long, blonde, voluptuous cow. <laughs> I'd have big, mooey, dewy eyes for you. <laughs> and after me, big boy, you sure don't want another. Well, we'll see more of Otis and his backstage report later, but now it's time for another one of my favourite bits. 
I think all the kids that come on blind date are absolutely fantastic. But I must admit, I've got a real soft spot for the lovely ladies and charming gents we like to refer to as our golden oldies. You. You well, you certainly mother. know how to make an entrance, I can tell you that. Well, if you can do it, so can I. Of course! <laughs> I know Jim, but I've forgotten what it means. What, it, what does Buston Holt mean? Buston Holt? Yes. <coughs> oh! with a short life and a long pocket, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Very good, bravo, molto buona, molto buona. Bravo, Stella. Well, we haven't got any 99-year-olds. In fact, they're very, they're quite young. Oh, that you got plenty of life on them. That's what I want. <laughs> Do you desert, no. down the des deserted lane, is it, what, what would you... <laughs> Not that way. <yet. laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely one. If I took you for a country drive and we ran out of petrol down a deserted lane, what would you suggest we do? What would you suggest we do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leg man myself. <laughs> and the sight of a shapely calf or pretty ankle is a real turn on for me. <laughs> <laughs> which, which feature of the opposite sex most appeals to you? Hang on, please. They say there's <coughs> they say there's many a good tune played on an old fiddle. <laughs> How good are you at fiddling? <laughs> marvellous ladies beyond those screens and you can only choose one of them. Well, I hope they remember that question too about me being sprayed at the edges, whoever it is. <laughs> well, they do, they hope they've answered that I know, I, hope, I said I hope they remember it. Oh, I... Oh, Emmy, you yes. never so well as well. <laughs> yes. Mind you, she wanted a Richard Gere. She wanted what? <laughs> Richard Gere. Did you? Yes. Or a, or a Michael Douglas. Oh, you wanted something you can't have. <laughs> to my arms, you <laughs> bundle of charms. for the ladies and you did say that you would want a younger lady is that right well then? I was out with a young filly of 42 last night <laughs> <laughs> no luck I'm afraid no luck <laughs> I mean you could have gone to a room for room service yeah, yeah. Uh, but you didn't take up the offer no. Chuck now why is that well no there's no more ink left in my pen <laughs> Well, there were some happy memories there, and we've had plenty more over 13 series. Have a look at what happens when a blind date ends in true love.
it will be the, the most unforgettable experience of my life. It was a tremendous place to visit at Niagara, but on top of that, I, I had the, the best woman in the world to go with. I didn't expect to meet a girl like Michelle on blind date. My feet haven't touched the ground since. <laughs> and I must say that colour lipstick suits you. And he always gave me a little peck to say goodnight. And once he did give me a right big snog. <laughs> Who got stuck in first? Was it you or him? <laughs> <laughs> what so we we what certainly intend to see each other. We're going to see each other. And, you know, like, when you get to my age, you take, romance takes a bit of stoking up again, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what about this lust? Tell us about this lust business. Well, actually, Silla, the, um, I was lusting about... <laughs> <laughs> Tie that donkey down. <laughs> well, quite frankly, I just want to have his children. Oh. <laughs> well, this is, well, you know, the 90s. Well, after we finished filming and we had the last night to ourselves, you know, it was off with the Jekyll and on with the Hyde. He, like, ripped his nice face off. I'm like, no, dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's now party time. <laughs> well, they all found love on a date. But not every couple who comes on the show gets on quite as well. I wouldn't say that. Are you saying they never argue? That's not what I said at all. You do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> Have a look at these rounds. It just tagged along like a lost sheep. Well, you were running ahead 100 miles an hour. <laughs> well, you knew what you were in for. I didn't know I was going to go in with an Olympic runner. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw you back. I didn't know what you looked like till we got back. At this point, I knew we'd got nothing in common, only perhaps our airspray. These <laughs> instincts of what have I got myself into now, I suppose. Uh, but, I mean, that's before I knew what sort of girl she was. And then when I got to know what sort of girl she was, it was worse. <laughs> How would you change our Jane? Major plastic surgery. Ma <laughs> All right, he's talking major plastic surgery here. What have you got to say about him? How would you change him? Six foot and down, straight. <laughs> Throughout the date, romance was very rarely in the air. The only thing that I can remember in the air was Eileen's obnoxious perfume. I couldn't fall in love with David because I didn't find him one bit attractive. Um, I, honest to God, I really couldn't invite him anywhere because I would be embarrassed to be seen. Everything I'd done, he'd done ten times better and, you know, every country I visited, he'd built the place. <laughs> Your own mission, you said you'd had, by your own mission, you'd had a very sheltered life, and the only thing you'd ever had that was important had happened. <laughs> is that you're a village queen. That was the only thing you'd said. And I can't help it, I have been to a lot of places. So. Just, a big just, head. just a case of being polite and friendly. I always and the thing initially people. was we, we went out There's on the no we went out we went out on the date, and if there was <laughs> <laughs> see this is what I felt with. If if <laughs> And then he gets on the date and he's off with another woman and her mother. Let me just, let me just, <laughs> let me just put, let me just put well, this in perspective. I don't know who more, the, the daughter or the mother. Oh. Well, actually, they were both better looking than you. <gasps> Listen, Jim. Yes? I'll tell you now to your face, you was the most boring man <laughs> that I've ever met in my life. And what about Thank the you. bloke who you were with all night? <laughs> Have you kissed him? Have you kissed him? Have you kissed him? On our date. Robert, what would you know about conversation, kid? Absolutely, it's rubbish. Yeah, it's a 
absolutely rubbish, and that it is. That is like jolly hot. Well, wait here, so I waited. You said I'll be back in a minute. You had gone. You said wait a minute, 45 minutes later, you haven't come back. How long was I supposed to wait? I was looking I think we could all do with a few minutes to cool down after that. So let's have a look at some more of our greatest moments. He just quacked. Cheers to you. <laughs> and then, oh yes, look at that, you'll be slipping off your shoes to tread on them. <laughs> what size do you take, Marie? Seven, someone so seven. Oh, yeah. little feet for someone yeah. so tall. <laughs> How's your feet? No corns or anything? Size nine, Scylla. Oh, I'm going to go Sarah's bit for her as well. Who's Sarah? I mean, Marie. Who's Sarah? I think he was somewhere else for the minute. <laughs> Well, I definitely ain't on this planet, am I? We're all dying to know who the hell's Sarah. The production girl at the back. Oh. You know, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. You lost. Get off that right. one. What's your favourite toy and do you resemble it? You've got your bongos and I've got my bongos because I'm a percussionist. No. And together we can go bonking. <laughs> What sort of practical joke are you likely to play on me on our date? Well, there'll be no time for practical jokes with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, 
Why number three? <laughs> Why? There'd be no time for practical jokes, because I can assure you, if you got me on... No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'd have time to play practical jokes, because I can assure you that... The... M oh, shit! <laughs> What great sporting loser do you feel most like and why? And that's to number three. The sporting loser I most feel like is Eddie the Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> the sporting loser... <laughs> <laughs> this time, this time's definitely right, this time. The sporting loser... No, go on. Go on. <laughs> the sporting loser I most feel like is Eddie the Eagle. The sporting loser I most feel like is Eddie the Eagle, because tonight I might fall. To... <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break right now, but we will be back in a moment to see how Rachel and Mark enjoyed their date in Tobago. Yeah. And here's the moment. Oh yes, here's the moment where they we well well. well. <laughs> Postmen have the problems with little doggies, you know, little nippy things. They get bitten and everything. Did you have, find any problems with animals when you went to visit homes? don't have any problems with dogs. I certainly have problems with cats. Oh. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with our little pussy? Uh, <laughs> sure. I'm sure there's certainly nothing wrong with your little pussy. <laughs> Hotel in <laughs> Jersey. Oh, is it? Um, that'll be another edit, won't it? <laughs> Beautiful girl that you've been banging on about all through the film. Though. <laughs> I think that's an edit. Uh, that's an edit. And um, I can get sort of quite suffocated easily. And I think he he didn't quite understand that. And it just sort of kept coming really, really quickly. Oh. So you know. <laughs> some more of those big personalities we've had on the show and they don't come bigger than this fella Paul from Dawson hey Paul <laughs> Thank you. and I must say Paul it is lovely to see you Chuck well it's nice to see you Silla. it really <laughs> is nice I was here so much better than last time I came on you'd be so cruel you really can <laughs> Lovely audience. That's been last week's. <laughs> <laughs> you chose number one, and that was Paul from Dorset. Come in, Paul. Need I ask? Well, she's absolutely gorgeous, isn't she? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'll be well into big sound. <laughs> we had a lot of things in common. I mean, we sat at the same table when we had dinner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she was on the same plane as me. <laughs> probably uh, be the first one to get in touch with Karen. You know, because she's got my suitcase. <laughs> I hear that your ideal date, you would love to go to the moon? Absolutely. <laughs> And that would Why? be great. <laughs> That's a really good Why? Well, sometimes in the summertime the moon looks really yellow, and I think it probably could be cheese, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Try and find out if it is. What can't you do anymore that you wish you could? And that is to number two. Well, when I was little, well even smaller, I used to sit in the water. <laughs> I used to sit in the washing machine with my cat, but my... <laughs> but... <laughs> but... <laughs> but... <laughs> but 
my cat ran away, so I let... <laughs> But, I mean, I really would like someone to come and make the machine spin with me now. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Lovely girl. Mm. Give my love to your grandmother. Thank you. I was watching rehearsals up in the room. You can cut this bit out if you want to. I was watching rehearsals up in the room when Tulia was on, and she was actually picked at rehearsals. You, you didn't see this, but I'm sure you'd like to know. She was picked at rehearsals, and just for a laugh, she picked a date, and it was a trip to Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> Tulia literally jumped the height of herself and ran off. <laughs> She's had a great day, and I just, I'd just like to share that with you. Anyway, <laughs> what are you hoping that lady beyond those screens will look like? Same as me with long hair. <laughs> number three, what shape is number one's face, and what's his most prominent feature? Let's have a look. Come on. He's <laughs> <laughs> got some nice rosy chubby cheeks. He's <laughs> got a, a slanted moustache. It looks like he's got an eyebrow that's come down for a drink. <laughs> Being on your own head, Cheryl. Because you chose number three, and that was Jeff from Cheshire. There he is. You can be found sometimes at three o'clock in the morning yeah. sitting in fields. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Playing a harmonica. Yeah. yeah. Me, me and my friends were like, um, we're <laughs> in, in, Dev in Devon. It's like such a lovely countryside, you know. And so we decided to go in the fields and play some music. And so I was on my harmonica, and like I was playing the blues, yeah. And like I was just going da 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 I went up, I copied the same pitch on my harmonica and went, whoa, 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 like this. And it's just like talking to each other for ages. Like, it's great. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Which nursery rhyme character are you like and why? Um, to number two. <laughs> I'd be Humpty Dumpty, Caroline. So I'm cracking up for you, baby. You better pick me up. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> no wonder, because you did say, you did say, did you not, that you didn't want a crazy off the wall. <laughs> I mean, do you like do you like going into the fields at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning? Oh, definitely, yeah. You do. Yeah. You Happy dance. Happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll have plenty of happy with him. Because you chose for your blind date this evening, number two. That was John from Sussex. Come in, John. <laughs> is where I normally make my entrance, but have you ever wondered what it looks like behind the set here on Blind Date? Yeah. Come on, well, I'll give you a quick peek. This is where I prepare before the show starts, and it's also where our pickers sit while they wait to go on. They wear headphones <laughs> so they can't hear anything the pickies say until they answer their questions, so they get absolutely no clues as who to pick and that's right, isn't it, Paul? Can you hear me, Paul? <laughs> Can you hear me, Paul? See? Not a dicky bird. I think we'd better rejoin Otis to find out a bit more about what goes on behind the scenes. Here in the makeup room with makeup artists. What, what's going on here for the, for the layman? <laughs> Well, I'm just putting a few Carmen rollers into her hair to give it a fuller look. Okay, a fuller look. Oh, a fuller look. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's 
What's this one? This is tonight? the TV antenna look. <laughs> <laughs> the TV aerial antenna look. Okay, now before you go on, I've got three final pieces of advice for you. Okay? Three final pieces. One, when you are leaving, make sure you leave the right way. Okay? <laughs> Very important. If you are picked, Wait until the screen comes back fully before stepping forward. These are all very important. And finally, don't, I repeat, don't answer the question before it's asked. OK, the last question, question number three. Hi if we... <laughs> I have to grab my Robertson oh, Crusoe. Oh. <laughs> All right, lads, here we go. Come on, come on, let's do it, lovely. Right, here we go. That's it. Come, fight up, fellas, come on. Excellent, lovely. Good luck, fellas. Well, I've done all I can with them. It's up to them now. I hope it goes all right. And uh, don't worry, lads, there's only uh, about 13 million people watching. Are the boys on first? The lads are on first, ladies. <laughs> If you could invent a magic potion, what would it help you to do and why? Um, I don't know if you've seen the film Groundhog Day, uh, but what I'd invent, I'd invent a potion that made time repeat itself so we could relive the moment when... when... Stop, can we start again? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Hi, I don't know if you've seen the film Groundhog Day, <laughs> but I'd invent the potion. <laughs> question is, if I wasn't working in a solicitor's office, I'd drive my own screen van. If you came to my van, what would you buy and why? Right. Well, I'd, uh, I'd buy a few. I'd buy a large double cone. It'd have flakes, hot chocolate... Oh, hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Twice! Oh. My third question is, whenever I have a problem or something is on my mind, I tend for, to reach for my marigolds, put on a headscarf and do some serious cleaning. What do you do when you have a problem and why? Well, I'm very good with listening to people... Oh, darn it again. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Mate, no, mate, no. don't worry about the gaffes. They'll Sorry, be cut mate. out of the show. Oh, they were good. Okay, they're don't, good. <laughs> don't worry about it. Thanks again, upstairs for a drink now. Absolutely. Yeah? All right, let's go. Well, this is the famous blind date screen, and if you've ever wondered how it works, let me tell you, it is a miracle of modern engineering. Watch this. Screen, please, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Mind you, the problem with this screen is that you never know exactly what you're going to get when it does go back. And they do say that first impressions count. So take it away, Jerry! <laughs> Turn down number two, and it is your unlucky number because he's absolutely fabulous. Come in, Willie from Jersey. Yeah. There he is. Like it. Mr. Like. This is lovely. Oh, they go away. <laughs> oh, you smell good. <laughs> oh, he does. He smells gorgeous. <laughs> you and a kebab on the way in. <laughs> Oh, the milky bars are on me! <laughs> oh, <they're bad> <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 wisdom. Oh, God, he doesn't look like he was hard to see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't 
know. I know. I'm so sad. <laughs> But you know, you see, it's difficult at this time. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not myself. <laughs> 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 Get off! <Claire. laughs> this is it. This is it. Do you like blondes? <laughs> as long as it's not a tight blonde. <laughs> on as well. My breath away, really. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I feel a bit excited. <laughs> well, if you thought the reactions when the screen went back were interesting, look at what can happen when they open one of these date cards. Sorry. <laughs> Where are you going? To Brazil. <laughs> it's a trip to Turkey. Oh. Okay. 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 A trip to Halifax. <laughs> You're jetting away to Canada to visit Halifax in Nova Scotia. <laughs> A trip to Iceland. Oh. in Cornwall. <laughs> She's as sick as a pig. <laughs> Look at this. You're flying across the top of the world to visit the mysterious east. You'll visit the Forbidden City, the incredible Summer Palace, and take a walk on the Great Wall. Isn't this fabulous? Look at that. It's going to be one of the most exotic blind dates ever. You happy? Oh, she's... Oh, tears and happiness. Oh, I like that. Oh, dear. Oh, well done. I'm so pleased for you. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, just make sure you come back. Oh, I think it's lovely. Is the infamous Count Roberto? Hello, Roberto. Hello, Sinner. 
Now, remind everybody, Roberto, where did you go on your blind date? A day on the Thames. Ah. Oh. Did you enjoy it? Love it, darling. Wonderful. Absolutely. If I remember rightly, you gave me some stick when you appeared on Blind Day. Well, darling, you deserved it. Did I? <laughs> Did I really? Well, let's have a look at Roberto and some more of Blind Date's greatest characters. This I man's do, yes. got money here. We're talking no, um, serious money. I, I enjoy classic toys. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't look at me when you said that. <laughs> Classic. I know. I mean, <laughs> so, what unusual gift would you give me as a romantic gesture? That goes to number two, please. Well, uh, Gilly, um, first of all, I'd uh, sort of whisk you off to Venice on the Orient Express. And we'll stay in that beautiful little hotel, world famous, called the Cipriani. He's not kidding. Is he not? And then... <laughs> Then I'll plenty, get... of, plenty of chips in the Cipriano. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave you a speaking part over? Uh... <laughs> I mean. <laughs> well, I ha somebody has to with oh, you no. around. <laughs> Jilly, say this quick because the audience is going to make up your mind for you. Say it dead quick. Don't look at them. Just say off the top of your head who you're going to go for. Two. <laughs> To you, you have just died and gone to hell. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> Your blind date for this evening, you chose number two. That was Roberto, Count Roberto from Jersey. Come in, Roberto. Okay, if I can open it up, huh? It says. <laughs> <laughs> Thing I can say, you deserve it. <laughs> well, you'll enjoy it. You're from Lancashire, you'll enjoy it. What does it say? A date on the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it couldn't have happened to a nicer man. <laughs> Ten year passport to go up the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your own fault if you can't take a joke, yes. <laughs> You know, I say this every week, but this is the only time I say it without really meaning it. <laughs> Will you come back next week and... <laughs> On the way to the airport, uh, Jules was talking about her fantasies. And, uh, well, I got a bit of a sweat on. I was a bit shocked by it, anyway. <laughs> Uh, pleasantly shocked, I should say, because uh, uh, I've not heard of a lot of them. I, I, was, I was really shocked, you know, because uh, I've not heard of um, a lot of those. I mean, the only chance I get to see anything like that or hear anything like that is when uh, those nature programmes are on at Rabbit's Rock. <laughs> <laughs> anything else, my mother switches it off. You know. <laughs> all, all I've ever wanted is a nice little homely girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get one, but what I got was... Well, I didn't get it, but what... what, what... <laughs> I mean, they put me off when, when we went to the hotel and everything, and they said, so what would you like to drink? And we were like, he said, can I have a glass of milk? <laughs> well, it's it, just a bit, you know... It had been a bit of an hectic day, so they said... <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I sit, can I sit on this, then? Oh, this no, sit on this for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking I might be getting the milk after all. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Mark. Mad Mark Sheldon, the poor man to Max Miller, the cheeky chappy from Chilwall, born 1912 and still going strong. <laughs> that is it. What? 80 years of old. Oh, but 80 years of young. Well, yes, yes, you want to see me tap down to no, no. and carry on and how's your father? Do, 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 do. Carry on, I mean. Oh, this should be more like you up in the pool, lad. Now, you have been in the army and the navy and the air force. I certainly have, boy. And if I wouldn't have had the operation, I'd have finished doing the rounds. Carry on, I mean. 
I'm making up as I go along, Mrs. I can tell I'm, I'm not a boy, you know. I'm not... Well, I'm a good clean living lad. I sleep under the bed. I get up at six <laughs> I do. I get up at six o'clock every morning and I punch the bag. Then she gets up and makes the tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up as I go along and I'm out of the bevy. Can you imagine when I've had a few? <laughs> and here he is again, the wonderful Mark. Oh, Mark, it's lovely to see you again. Now, what have you been up to, Mark? What have you been up to? Well, I really should go into my dance here, but you, <laughs> you can't dance on carpets and how's your father? So get out of here. It's, it's carpets. Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, listen, come here, come here. The latest joke, there's a mad inventor in our street. Listen to this. Uh, you're on next, sir. A mad inventor. There's a mad inventor in our street and he's invented a liquid that would melt anything in the world. Don't matter what it is, it'll melt it. The only trouble is, he doesn't know where to keep it. <laughs> words, unlike some of the others who appeared on Blind Date. Well, I sometimes work as a magician's assistant, so my nose would have to start off by saying, Dear Rich, I'm off being sawn in half. Don't worry about dinner because I'll... Ah, oh, I forgot the other bit. <laughs> Dear Rich, I'm off being sawn in half. But don't worry about dinner. Oh my God, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Rich, I'm off being sawn in half, but don't worry about dinner, as I'll be pulling. Oh my God, I don't. Believe it. <laughs> I don't know how you didgeridoo did that, but it's wonderful. I think we'd better get rid of it now. Oh, oh, it's quite heavy, aren't it? <laughs> Are you ready for this, Mark? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you any closer to choosing who you're going to go with tonight on your blind date? Not yet. I hope not, because here's our Graham with that quick remark. Oh, it's the first thing you've that time already. <laughs> Have you got one more question? <laughs> oh, we have. Oh, sorry. Is there a problem here? Yes, there is. That bloody thing never went back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a real... <laughs> yes, I'd love here. to be a TV presenter and would really like to stand in for Michael Aspel. <laughs> <laughs> Which TV show would you most like to star in? Oh, I would like that uh, American show that comes on every week. <laughs> what the devil is the name of it? to meet the lucky lad who has to choose one of these three smashing girls. Mickey from St Albans, Isaskon, is that right? <laughs> Azaskan, what kind of a name is that? <laughs> Azaskan. <laughs> Azaskan. Is it Azaskan? Azaskan. <laughs> Mickey from St Albans, Isaskon, <laughs> is a scone. What is it? What? It's some kind of scone, isn't it? <laughs> Split it up. I said dash, ask dash. And then put an extra K in, con. Very careful, very careful. Oh dear. Why couldn't you be called Murray or Joan? <laughs> yes. She's from Halifax as well. <laughs> well, this is Martin on camera too. And he's seen a few things down his lens over the years, I can tell you. Haven't you, Martin? <laughs> you see, he won't speak. He won't speak. No, they have to pay him more if he speaks. Isn't that right, Martin? <laughs> won't speak. Hey, hey, How hey. How do you 
do Scylla Black. Oh! I'm doing OK, Kirken. So am I, babe. Now, Kirken, come on, that's a lovely romantic name. Very film star name. Could be, you could must be. have a very exotic type job. What do you do? Do you want to know what I do for a living? I want to know. Shall I know. tell these folks what I do for oh, a I'm living? Oh, I'm glad you said folks. I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> yes, please do. I'm a driller, Scylla. Oh! <laughs> well, you look like a Birkham Kirkham, you do. <laughs> I do that. I go to water aerobics, swimming, a bit of jogging. I've never heard of water aerobics. What's it's, that? It's the same as normal aerobics, except it's in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told I can crack walnuts with my thighs. <laughs> I hope it's my walnuts, but... <laughs> oh, no! Ooh. Oh, you cheeky little thing, you! Oh, you little minx! Oh. Here's a little poem. You said that! From your favourite Dubliner, Ed. <laughs> I'm not really feeling myself tonight, so do you mind if I feel you instead? <laughs> I'm known as the hip hop Hooray Henry. I'm an enthusiastic gardener. If I asked you to give me a hand in the garden, what would you be best at? Well, Joe, what I would do best would be to sit in my hammock and watch you dig the garden, roll <laughs> on, and then when I saw you got tired and your back was sore, I would take you into the house and give you a slow massage. Probably you would like it, because I know I would like to give you one. I am a very physical person, but I didn't... There wasn't that much of the physical aspect, actually, between the two of us, which was fine. That was fine. Not really, but it was OK. We got a helicopter up to Derbyshire in the morning and I spent the whole time throwing up. And Ivan, the pilot, was quite impressed with me, actually, because he said I was the first five-bagger he'd ever had on his trip. <laughs> when I saw you first back when I first saw Paula, I thought to myself, balls are. I just got a beautiful dress on. It was very low-cut, and I thought to myself, the lady's got a bingo blouse on. Eyes down, let's all look in. Well, that's all we've got time for now, I'm afraid. And I hope you've enjoyed Blind Date's greatest hits. And never fear, Scylla will be here with lots more Blind Dates very soon. So until then, ta-ra for now. Ta-ra, everyone. <laughs> I can recommend this show. It's absolutely... <laughs>